Welcome to Point Loma Church. We are so glad that you are here today. Now, if you're newer to the Point Loma Church online community, a very special welcome to you. And we'd love to get to know you more. So there is a connect button that appears in the chat and it's also in the upper right hand corner of your screen. Just click on the button and fill out the form and I'll be sure to get back in touch with you. And we'd love to get you more involved here at the church. Now, I also want to remind you that there is a request prayer button that's available each and every week here in our services. So if you click that button, a chat box will appear and it's a private um, room where you can put your prayer request in. And there's a team of people that are ready to pray with you. So if there's anything that we could be praying for, just go ahead and click on that button. Now, if you're not already logged in, I invite you to do that now and to greet one another in the chat. And this is just a highlight of the week, one of the ways that we can just check in on one another and acknowledge that we are here in worship together today. Now, next week, we have a new series starting called Never Too Old for Fairy Tales. You know, now many of us have become disenchanted by the church in this modern era, due in part to the lack of belief of the transformational power of God. But for much of the church, instead of mystical experiences, faith has become more calculated. And so this spring series will help us to recover the magic of God as we en engage our imaginations through both scripture and fairy tales. So by unleashing our inner child, perhaps we'll become enchanted once again. But today, we have the privilege of hearing from Michael Lombrano, our director of youth ministry and then some of the youth from our community will be participating in the service as well and I don't know about you but I know it's always an encouragement of, to, in my faith to see the faith of a younger generation so let's open our hearts as we prepare for worship today Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his We 
Hi, my name is Sarah. Today I'm going to talk about a time when God has shown up in my life and when he's given me hope. One time that God has shown up in my life was during COVID after my Girl Scout co-leader died. She was in her late 30s and starting to have health issues. She was admitted to the hospital where doctors determined she would need a hysterectomy. Normally a routine surgery that happens every day, something went terribly wrong. During surgery, she had a massive stroke and she never woke up. Miss Karina was a mom to three girls who were all in our troop. She was a great leader. She led all the camping trips and did all the outdoor stuff because my mom doesn't like that part of Girl Scouts. She and my mom balanced each other out. After Miss Karina died, our troop fell apart. Her three girls quit along with all of their friends. Now there are only three other girls in our troop. God has given us hope and encouraged us to keep going. We are getting back to meeting regularly and we're even going on a cruise in May. God has helped us through this hard time and he has reminded us that no matter what happens, he will always bring us through it. The greatest thing about the resurrection and Christ on the cross is the fact that we are forgiven. But if we do not confess our sins to God, how can God forgive? And so we come before God today in confession together, followed by a time of silent prayer. Lord, we have not lived our lives as kingdom people. We place our crowns on hopelessness, fear, and selfishness. 
We are ruled by our schedules and our need for control. We make kings of the things we acquire and queens of our immediate desires. We forget that your kingdom draws near to us on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us, we pray. Amen. God's love is new every morning and all day long is working for the good in this world. We hope that in our forgiveness, it stirs in us an ability to serve God, to live peacefully with all than our neighbors and creation and to devote every day to God. Know that you are forgiven. Amen. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for the breath in our lungs. Thank you for the opportunity to learn more about you. God, uh, I pray that your words are remembered. I pray that the Holy Spirit fills in any gaps that are left in our minds. Lord, we thank you for the youth that have participated in Youth Sunday, um, for their bravery and their courage to stand up in front of people um, and praise you ultimately. God, thank you for this day again. We pray these things in your son's name we pray. Amen. There are these two young fish swimming along, and they happen to meet an older fish swimming the other way, who nods and says, Morning, how's the water? And the two young fish continue swimming on for a little bit, and then one fish looks over at the other and asks, What the heck is water? The point of this parable ish story is that the most important things are often the ones that are hardest to talk and to see about. Our scripture today comes from the book of Luke chapter 24. This is after the death of Jesus and on the same day as his resurrection. We find ourselves walking back to a village named Emmaus with two men we have not met before. These two men were conversing all about the events that had taken place over the past few days and we see that they seem to be troubled by it. The two men meet a stranger who walks with them and just listens to their conversation for a while. Eventually, the stranger asks about the conversation and they start telling him all about the events that have taken place over the last few days. They tell the stranger about Jesus and all that he had done and then eventually, they tell the stranger about their disappointment. They're disappointed because they believe Jesus was supposed to be the one to redeem Israel, the Messiah, and how their chief priests, the people who are also hoping for that very redemption, were the ones who stirred the crowds and handed Jesus over to be killed. 
as if this was already not enough to comprehend, they share that there was a woman who shared that Jesus was alive because an angel told her and that his tomb was empty. The stranger then speaks up and reminds them that the prophets had spoken about the Messiah and how he was to suffer and then enter into his glory. Not only does he say that, the stranger basically takes them back to school and discusses how Moses and all of the prophets say these things. We learn that Jesus is actually that stranger and he has kept him, his identity hidden from these two men. And this is the point of the story that we hop into in verse 28. It reads this, As they came near the village to which they were going, the stranger walked ahead as if he were going on, but the two men urged him strongly saying, stay with us because it's almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it, broke it, and then gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him as Jesus and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scripture to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem and they found the 11 and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed and he has appeared to Simon. Then the two men told what had happened to them on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the story, Jesus had kept his identity a secret, and although we cannot say for certain why Jesus kept his identity a secret, we do know that he wanted them to recognize that this was all going to happen. He said, look at what the prophets had said. The Messiah was supposed to suffer and then be glorified. Take a look at the cross on the doors. Originally, they were separated, and there was a door for those of you online, for the sanctuary, the chapel, and for our youth and children. Each door is made of the same thing, and yet they look different, right? Each door has its own unique design, and yet the thing that brings them all together is Jesus. The life and death of Jesus is what brings all of us together. The doors were all separate and messy when they were by themselves, and then together they revealed the cross. It took a change of perspective and seeing the entire project put together that we see Jesus at the center of it all. And if I can take a moment and be honest with you, right now it feels like my life is a mess, right? It feels like one of the doors before it was all put together. It feels like there are a never ending stream of fires to put out. Some are consequences of my own action and others are just how life goes sometimes. These messes have been circling around me for months and I felt lost. I did not know what to do, so I just kept putting one foot in front of the other. I was walking down a road with no end in sight. And it was not until last week, during the Easter service, that I realized why it felt like there was no end in sight. I was one of the young fish swimming around, wondering, what the heck is water? I was so unaware of the reality I was in that I had lost hope. Carla said last week that Jesus is here right now, and my initial reaction was almost a scoff. Because if I'm being completely honest with you, all the pain and suffering that is going on in the world, with all the messes that are going on in my life, sometimes it seems like we are living in a weird kind of hell because it's the same pain, it's the same suffering, it's the same messes that never change, and time and time again, it's the same thing. Maybe we restructure something, maybe we put a band-aid on something, but in the end, it never changes. And this is not just happening in my own mind or in my own life, it's also happening in your life, in your mind, in your neighbors, in your friends' lives. It's even happening here in Point Loma, and yet, with all that is going on. When I look to that cross, am I supposed to feel hopeful? Am I supposed to feel satisfied? Am I supposed to feel like Jesus is here? I was completely shut off to the reality that Jesus is here in this moment. There's an ancient parable that originated on the Indian subcontinent that talks about six blind men who all lived in the same village. The other villagers loved these blind men and would keep things that would harm them 
far, far away from them. The blind men would listen to tales from travelers in order to learn about the world outside of their village. The men were curious about many stories that they heard, but they were the most curious about elephants. They were told that elephants could trample forests, carry huge burdens, and frighten young and old with their loud trumpet calls, but they also knew that their leader's daughter rode an elephant when she traveled across her father's kingdom. Would a leader let his daughter near such a great and dangerous creature? The blind men argued day and night about elephants. An elephant must be a powerful giant, claimed the first blind man, as he had heard stories about elephants being used to clear forests and build roads. No, you must be wrong, argued the second blind man. An elephant must be graceful and gentle if a princess is to ride on its back. You're wrong. I've heard that an elephant can pierce a man's heart with its terrible horn, said the third blind man. Please, said the fourth blind man, you are all mistaken. An elephant is nothing more than a large sort of cow. You know how people exaggerate. I'm sure that an elephant is something magical, said the fifth blind man. That would explain why our leader's daughter can travel safely throughout the kingdom. I don't believe elephants exist at all, declared the sixth blind man. I think we're just victims of a cruel joke. After the village was tired of hearing the men bicker about what an elephant may be, they decided, fine, we'll bring them one to experience it firsthand, surely that will stop their arguments. When the blind men reached the palace and stood before an elephant, they all reached out and touched it. The first blind man reached out and touched the side of the huge animal, saying, an elephant is smooth and solid like a wall, he declared. It must be very powerful. The second blind man put his hand on the elephant's limber trunk and said, an elephant is like a giant snake. The third blind man pointed, uh, felt the elephant's pointed tusk. I was right, he declared. This creature is as sharp and deadly as a spear. The fourth blind man touched one of the elephant's four legs. What we have here, he said, an extremely large cow. The fifth blind man felt the elephant's giant ears and said, I believe an elephant is like a huge fan or maybe like a magic carpet that can fly over the mountains and over the treetops. The sixth blind man gave a tug on the elephant's coarse tail and said, why, this is nothing more than a piece of old rope. Dangerous indeed. The blind men were brought to the shade and then discussed further about what they had experienced. An elephant is like a wall, said the first blind man. Surely we can agree on that. A wall? An elephant is a giant snake, answered the second blind man. It's a spear, I tell you, insisted the third man. I'm certain it's a giant cow, said the fourth blind man. Magic carpet, there's no doubt about it, said the fifth. Don't you see, pleaded the sixth blind man. Someone used a rope to trick us. Their arguments continued and their shouts grew louder and louder. Wall, snake, spear, carpet, rope, wall, snake, spear, carpet, rope. Stop shouting, called a very angry voice. It was their leader who was awoken from his nap by the noisy argument. How can each of you be so certain you are right, asked the ruler. The six blind men considered the question, and then, knowing their leader to be very wise, they decided to say nothing at all. The elephant is a very large animal, said the leader kindly. Each man only touched one part. Perhaps if you put the parts together, you will see the truth. Now let me finish my nap in peace. He's right, said the first blind man. To learn the truth, we must put all of our parts together. Let's discuss this on the journey home. Each of us have different experiences and expectation as to what Jesus is supposed to look like. For some, Jesus is the one who will bring about a military conquest and destroy evil. For others, Jesus is a gracious and loving God who wants to be with all creation no matter what. And to others, Jesus is nothing more than an idea used to manipulate billions of people across the world. As we learned, our senses, our experiences, our reality is not only completely valid, you did experience them after all, it's also incomplete. Like the blind men, 
We will never know who Jesus is without sharing our ideas with the other blind believers around us. We won't have all the answers in this life, and yet we do have an idea of what God wants this world to be like. Right? The meta narrative, the overarching story of the Bible, is creation and God reuniting in a place of perfection. We see Jesus creating the foundation of this upside down kingdom of God that gives power to the powerless, a voice to the voiceless, and meaning to those who have lost all of theirs. You see, God uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things. God takes our mess and our experiences and uses them so that we can see that despite the chaos all around us, Jesus is here with us in the midst of it all. Not only that, our mess, our disagreements, our imperfections only help make Jesus more pronounced. And if we're looking in on our life, what if we were to believe this is true for us too? Can the messes we make show Jesus in this world? Well, typically it's not the mess itself uh, that shows Jesus. It's our response. When we give our mess to God, there is not judgment from it. There is love and acceptance. God says, I don't care what you have done. I love you. We should respond like the two men walking back to their town who listened to a stranger and then invited him in, into shelter, and offered a meal. Even when the two men were unsure what to believe, they still followed what Jesus had taught. See, in Matthew 25, Jesus said, I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. These men potentially unintentionally showed exactly what Jesus was talking about and was all about. Showing love, listening, and helping whenever and wherever you can. This world is full of strangers and friends who may not agree or with or understand what they are saying, and yet, like the two walking back to the village, we still have a responsibility to love and help those around us, even when we do not recognize the stranger as Jesus. That is the reality that is hardest to see for us and hardest for us to talk about. That is our water. As Christians, we are responsible for giving away the power we have, using our voice to help those who are not represented, to feed the hungry, to give drink to those who need it, to take the stranger in, right, the other, and give them what they need. Jesus is all around us. Jesus is here in this moment, in this room. Will you listen to what he has to say, even when you don't recognize him?
Lord, thank you for this post-Easter season. Lord, Lord, will we get to bask in your love and your grace and in the risen Christ. Lord, we know that we look around our world and sometimes it's hard for us to see your power and your grace. Lord, sometimes we are clouded over by things that we don't want to see and we ask why. And sometimes, more often than not, you are at work and we do not recognize it. And so, Lord, just like the road to Emmaus, when our eyes or the disciples' eyes were closed over and they couldn't see, Lord, help us to see. Help us to not be blinded, Lord, by the things that distract us in this world. Help us to see you at work so that we in turn can step into what you are doing. Lord, we pray that you help us to see you at work in our individual lives, Lord, whatever we're going through this morning, Lord, that we might seek you and see your promise in that. Lord, that we might see you at work in in the problems within our city, Lord, with those without homes, with those, Lord, that are on our streets living under the abuse, really, of drugs and alcohol. We pray, Lord, that you might be found in that. Lord, we pray that for our country and for our world, that in the midst of devastation and places where there are natural disasters, there are war, and people are displaced and wondering why, feeling, Lord, that they cannot find a home. Lord, we pray that they might be opened up in spirit, Lord, to see you at work in their lives, Lord, to recognize this moment, in this moment, they are not alone, Lord, but they are found in you, and your presence is more powerful than anything else. And so, great God, thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Lord, thank you that you are indeed at work. Lord, we pray that you help us to see that. And we ask this all through your son's name, who taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now is the time in the service when we recognize that everything we have is a gift. The people we are sitting next to, the air that we breathe, the time that we have, and the money that we work for, which for me is allowance. God has given us all of these gifts, and I invite you to reflect on how God has been moving in your life. Reflect on how God has been moving in the church and in the community. I know for me, God has been in my life through the church and the amazing community I've been raised in here. Through school, where I get to learn and have teachers and friends who really care about me. God has been there in times of joy and in times of need, and I feel truly grateful for this gift.
And now, my friends, as you leave this place, I hope you do so lifted up and not in despair. And may you indeed recognize Christ in your life, working in you and through you to love God's world more. And we ask this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, I'm sure that we can all relate to the blindness that was in the stories for today. Whether that's the two men on the road to Emmaus or the six men with the elephant, not recognizing or not seeing the fullness of who God is. So I pray that each of our eyes can be opened more fully this week to the face of God and to see the needs of those around us. Now I do invite you to join our coffee and community time that we have each week after service. And this is just a wonderful time of getting to know some of the others who are participating in this online service. So just click on the Zoom link that appears in the chat. And if you want to watch the service again or share it with a friend, go to our YouTube channel and you can watch it again or share the service there. And while you're there, you can like and subscribe to our channel to get notifications on when we post new content in the future. So I hope to see you back here next week at the beginning of our new series entitled Never Too Old for Fairy Tales. Take care and God bless.